Hi everyone, welcome back to our third and final session for the Ancient Healthcare Workshop series that we've been hosting. So far we've covered a lot of interesting and amazing information from you know just the basics of Ayurveda, just the basics of the ancient healthcare system, some of the, you know, the three doshas, the five elements, and then we kind of shifted and transitioned into um, the digestive kind of power and the connection to the brain and why it's so important. And more importantly, on this session, we really want to cover stress. I mean, the amount of stress that each of us have every single day is like immense and never before in recorded history have we had this much stress in our lives yeah. to just to live, literally just to live. Um, and, you know, some of it is self-inflicted and it's very emotional and it's, it's very interesting and we're going to get kind of deeper into this subject with a very special guest that I'm going to introduce in just a bit. Um, I'm going to jump to the slides real quick and then from the slides what we'll do is we'll come back, we'll introduce our guest for a little bit and then we'll get started with her wonderful presentation on stress and the epidemic that is literally killing us, it is literally killing us stress. So we need to shine a light on this, we need to share some more information on it. So, what we'll do is I'm just going to jump to my slides here. And my slides are, there they are. All right. So just want to make sure you can see my slides. You should be able to. And again, our special guest, Dr. Gokhani, Tripti Gokhani. I'm going to get to her in just a bit. She has really... Um, been a lead research kind of advocate on stress and the brain and what it does to us as humans and, and how we interact. Um, let me jump to the next slide here. Just a quick recap on Ayurveda and what it is and what this whole entire mission is about. It's a 6,000 year old science and it's based on reconnecting with nature and I think that's what really makes it so interesting um, because it's not going out and venturing and trying to discover something. It's it's connecting with something that was already always there, mm -hmm. and that's nature. And so it's really powerful when you think about it from that sense. And then we also covered some of the doshas. As we mentioned, there's three primary doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha. And then we got into a little bit of detox protocols. What are some things you can do to just kind of combat the everyday things that, you know, we live in this world. Um, you know, we experience it. We're, we're going to be hit with toxins. We're going to be hit with pollution. It's a part of our daily life. We hit, we are, we're hit with stress because it's a part of our daily life. It's the modern way of life. And, you know, in thinking about how we're connecting to nature, the beautiful part of Ayurveda is that you're also connecting to, like Amish mentioned, the doshas, your individual unique body composition. And so when you do that, you really are achieving a holistic wellness, which we really um, have shied away from in this modern day. Uh, you know, it's away from the mind, body, spirit connection. So that's what's so different and unique about incorporating Ayurveda uh, into the modern day. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just a quick recap, what is the Ancient Healthcare Project and why are we so passionate about what we're doing? You know, the Ancient Healthcare Project is about, you know, one, getting this documentary film out to the masses and effectively introducing and educating a large audience on this ancient healthcare. The second step is build out the platform, you know, really good at um, getting information out there create an engaged community and an active web presence, um, design an editorial schedule of these wonderful pieces of footage that we have that we can share with you know, the world. And this is information that's you know, practical for anybody, whether they're practitioners, providers, teachers, or anyone that's interested in healing themselves or learning more about this science. And then three is provide the products to, the, to, to this audience that we create and that we engage. And that is going to be done through supplements, the telemedicine platform that we briefly discussed, um, the lifestyle products such as oils and teas and spices and candles, some of the things that are just a part of Ayurveda, it's a part of the lifestyle, it's the things that can literally shift just the way you think, the way you feel, the way you act, 
on your DNA, like molecular level. Yeah, it's so sure. powerful. And then we'll have uh, information products, e-courses, cookbooks. Um, one of the cookbooks is actually from Dr. Gokhani herself. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, talk about the retreats and the symposium. And, you know, that's really what it is. Creating these retreats would be so powerful if we had these events where people can go and detox from this every day and create build that up community. that we have and yeah. create that community and really go one step deeper than just supplements or just oils and really turn it into an experience. Yes. And all of this is our big, 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 big goal. It's to reach 20 million people by the end of 2016. Um, that's really what it's about. We want to get this documentary out to these many people and, and we have the ability to do it. And that's why we created this campaign. Uh, it's just to kind of get us to the finish line. And now it's just about putting all the pieces we've built and putting it out there. So why is Ayurveda important? Well, Ayurveda is the most accurate ancient medical system, providing solutions to many of our modern day health concerns. We're now sicker than ever. Things are broken, like the medical system, the herbal, you know, manufacturing system, the pharmaceutical system, I mean, the food industry. Yeah. I mean, things are just broken and we really, we need solutions and we need them now. So why is stress so important? Well, we talked about in the last webinar that your brain is just as important as your gut and your gut's obviously important. Now, stress is just how you perceive things. It's just how you take something in, you know? Um, the best way, one of the things in the documentary, we have this little scenario where it's like, if there's two people in the same situation, one person can be like, oh my God, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. And another person could be like, this is bliss. This is like pure wonderfulness. And you can change that situation, whether it's taking a test, whether it's um, doing work, whether it's going to see your in-laws, what, whatever it is in, in everyday life, everyone has a different perception towards that item and it causes everyone a different kind of stress in their life. For sure. And I mean, we all have stress, right? It's it's something that we deal with daily. It's like, it's the biggest, most urgent challenge, I think, that each and every one of us is, is dealing with. And I mean, you can see on the slide itself showing how stress affects all of America. I mean, you know, it's the cause of at least 60% of all illnesses. And, and just think about that for a second. I mean, we've got diabetes, heart disease, we've got all of these these horrible things that are plaguing us and the cause, the root cause is stress, right? Mm -hmm. So um, stress is not something we can eliminate or just put on the sideline here. I mean, our, it's causing us $300 billion every year in America in medical bills. And of course that's, you know, lost productivity. That's uh, just so, you know, it, it efficiency. Really efficiency. It's not even efficient at all. Right. For sure. And 75% of adults actually experience moderate to extreme stress every single day. And there's, it's probably more. I mean, 75% mm -hmm. is what we've recorded, right? So, I mean, almost all of us are experiencing Even stress. losing sleep. Oh, for you know, sure. And heart disease and all these different things that we're talking about is like, and I think even personally, I, I experience stress for sure. quite a bit. And I think all of us do, you know, being busy with the the business and everyday life like that and then you know having a, a child and and a pregnant wife and a pregnant, <laughs> and a pregnant no. wife you know it's, yeah no we it can all be very challenging to balance everything yes and eat healthy and be present at the same time you know and stress sometimes is just we're not present with something and that's what causes stress but that's for a different yeah conversation you know this is like how do we combat stress without but, some something that's gonna like have to alter some something else in yeah, your body. Yeah, without the remedies know? like medication, which will have side effects. Without um, some people will say, "Oh, I'm gonna take a few days to recharge," and then they come back and you know they're back in it again. And so, what do we need? We need something even more. We need almost like a revolution. And so that's where Ayurveda comes in for mm -hmm. us. That's where it, that's where we're really talking about here. Um, and so, and that's why we have, you know, Dr. Gokhani here as well. So, um, here she is. 
And we're so excited to have you, Dr. Gokani. Thank you for joining us. And, you know, she's one of the world's leading neurologists and Ayurvedic physicians, and she's going to be talking to us about stress, how to overcome it. And through actually Ayurveda, through Ayurvedic food, through supplements, exercise, um, you know, modern, modern scientific knowledge, it's cutting edge stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our uh, camera back on and welcome Dr. Gokhani. Thank you, Dr. Gokhani, so much for being here and being on our, our guest and uh, helping us learn a little bit more about this ancient healthcare from your perspective and why you've integrated it into your practice and what you're doing with it and, you know, digging into some of this really amazing And how, how you're changing lives here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both for having me. I feel incredibly honored to just be a part of your mission and to help educate on this topic. And like you both mentioned, it's incredibly important to, to send a message and to help share this knowledge with as many as we can. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, Dr. Gokhani has a very important presentation. It's about this stress <laughs> epidemic that's going on right now and she's going to kind of walk us through what she sees on an everyday basis, what she sees as a solution, uh, what she also sees as a way for us to uh, change our lives, to just implement very little things that can radically shift. Small things, small little things, we don't even realize that like one herb can radically change the way you think and feel and I mean it's wild, it's wild. So again, thank you uh, so much for being here and we're ready to get started yeah. when you are. I know everyone just kind of likes to jump right in and just get to the learning. So. Eager for the knowledge. Right? Yeah. And uh, make sure you have a paper and pen or something to take notes on. Yeah. You that last time. You're going to get some great information. Right Definitely want to take notes. This is going to be awesome. Thank uh, you. So <laughs> let's go ahead and you can start your presentation whenever you're ready and you do the screen share through the Google Hangouts. Yeah. And uh, let's, let's learn some cool stuff. I know in the last session I was like, Whoa, like all these pieces just got put together and now I'm going to see even more pieces come together. So we're excited. Yeah. All right. So let's get started. So <laughs> the conversation is really today about stress and understanding stress and how we can all individually become more connected and help ourselves with managing the stressors, as we both mentioned. So mm -hmm. when you look at, you know, Pooja, you just mentioned this, you look at stress and disease. The reality is that 75 to 90% of physician visits to the primary care office are really due to stress and stress-related problems. And I remember I was, you know, I had actually studied family practice before I entered a neurology residency program. And I was impressed with the idea of being able to help um, an individual from the entire kind of using a systems-based approach, understanding their family needs, understanding their socioeconomic status, understanding their whole body, and kind of working to help an individual get to that optimal state. Um, by using this kind of family system, family medicine approach. What happened was that I had these 20 minute visits in my residency program to see a patient that often complained mm -hmm. of three or four complaints, you know, anxiety, problems sleeping, digestive issues. And then, you know, while they're at it, they asked, hey, can we get a pap smear today? Cause I'm due for my pap smear. And I had 20 minutes, right? And yeah. I heard this fact that 75 to 90% of these individuals were really presenting with stress related problems and I had 20 minutes to really listen, to understand, mm -hmm. and to do something about it, right? And I thought, Absolutely. how can I do this? How, how can I possibly address this in my clinical visit? Mm -hmm. So I, I really paused and I thought, am I in the right place to practice what I really want to practice? So I actually stepped away from that residency program, took some time. I spent about six months in psychiatry, training in psychiatry, and eventually found my home in neurology because I feel like neurology was just that perfect blend of understanding the brain but truly getting to the mind behind the brain, you know? And I started learning more. And I'll just share with you some facts as of today and then kind of take you back to kind of where I was when I started practicing. So the U.S. is ranked... 37th in the world for healthcare. Okay, 37th mm -hmm. in the world. And we have spent, if you look at 2012, $2.8 trillion on healthcare. Okay, now we <laughs> think that is, oh, wow. oh, right? $2.8 trillion. Mm -hmm. 
Eighteen percent of GDP uh, was spent on healthcare of our gross domestic wow. product. Okay, so if you think even the second biggest spender being the Netherlands, we are we are six percent more than the Netherlands. So yeah. let's think of that. That in numbers is one trillion dollars more than the Netherlands. Yeah, that's that's pretty. <laughs> that's not. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. just yeah. What would you all do with a trillion dollars? I'm thinking if I had a trillion dollars to just kind of help the healthcare system today, right? So mm -hmm. when you think of what we're spending, we're ranked 37th, and truly speaking, we're 2.8 trillion in spending. We have to make some changes. We have to make some changes. So. Okay. You know, so we're ranking one of the lowest, and yet we're one of the most expensive healthcare systems. And most is most visits are due to stress. So mm -hmm. either we take some time to learn about stress, or we just let this kind of spending continue, and we see diseases continue. Hmm. Yeah, which one sounds better? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> better. And so I thought, you know, and I, I now I'm looking at where I am. And when I was that first year kind of resident in family practice, scratching my head, now I look and I say, gosh, you know, we, we've got a solution. We really have a solution. Mm -hmm. How about we manage stress better? How mm -hmm. about we teach ourselves and everyone we know how to connect with their stress? And how about using that approach to helping our healthcare costs and helping disease? And that's what we really need to focus on. And that I don't is, that, that is, yeah, absolutely. Right? Hmm. So as I kind of ventured out, so here I am, this kind of you know neurologist entering the world of clinical medicine, and I found my place in migraine. My first practice was working in a headache clinic. And yeah. just to share a little bit about that, 36 million uh, Americans suffer with migraines. And the NIH funding is less than one-tenth of one percent even though migraine is more common than asthma or diabetes. We are actually spending nothing on this disease, you know? Wow. And when you look at who it affects, um, it's affecting individuals that have a very, very um, productive life. You know, usually those that suffer with migraines are between ages 25 to about 55, so they're in the productive years of their lives childbearing ages, taking care of kids, taking care of important positions at work. And when they get hit with an entire, you know, this attack of pain that's so incredibly disabling, known to be one of the most disabling conditions known to mankind, having an attack of pain like migraine, they're just out for the day. There's just, there's nothing they can do, right, when you're a sufferer. Mm -hmm. And right now we've got these prescriptive uh, abortive medications that are so strong. And I started seeing this group of patients saying, wow, what, what's going on? Why are so many suffering? And, and what can I do so I don't have to prescribe so much? And in my first practice, that headache clinic, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I, I used and prescribed, I should say not used, I prescribed so many uh, narcotic medications, methadone, uh, Vicodin, fentanyl, uh, you name it, I was prescribing it because I was being trained at that time, you have to get people out of pain, right? Mm -hmm. With that, I started seeing rebound. I started seeing all of these negative kind of secondary things that started happening, digestive issues, mood issues, depression. And I thought, there's something wrong here. I, I can't do this anymore. So when you look at the, the real economic burden, migraine is $23 billion a year spent on migraine. I thought to myself, I've got to find a solution, not only to not use these pharmaceuticals as often as I was, but I have to help with this concept in my mind that stress was linked to disease. How can I help these individuals with their stress, right? Mm -hmm. So then I started studying it, and I actually left that original practice I was in, and I began my entry into integrative medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, and I started studying vigorously anything I could to learn mm -hmm. about this, this disease state and then to learn a lot more about health in general. Mm -hmm. And I started doing testing and the testing that really opened my eyes was adrenal testing. And I looked at something called adrenal stress index and I had patients measure their salivary cortisol levels starting first thing in the morning, uh, first wake up testing and then test it again at noon, again at three o'clock and then again at bedtime. And looking at those profiles was shocking to me. 
what I found was that their daily cortisol, which is supposed to be the highest cortisol in the first thing when you wake up, and then drop at noon, come down around three o'clock, and then drop your cortisol at bedtime so you can fall asleep. My patients, 90% of them, 90% of them were in adrenal fatigue. They were not making 90%, wow. 90%, wow. Huh. 90%. And I actually presented that at the Academy of Pain meeting a couple of years ago. It was, it was shocking to me because I thought, does anyone realize this, that every migraineur I'm seeing has this depleted adrenal system? And, and what is leading to that, the picture of adrenal fatigue? Hmm. Is it that the adrenals aren't working or has the brain taken a back seat? Because for so many years, the brain has been turning on that cortisol response due to chronic stress, due to chronic pain, that the brain has finally said, well, you know, I can't do this anymore. So I'm going to take a back seat and let the adrenals try to do what you can. And the truth wow. of the matter is it's actually a disengagement of the brain. The brain stops trying to regulate the adrenals because at a certain point in time, it gets desensitized because the stress is just chronic. Wow. You know, hmm. it's really amazing. So with that, with that was my mission really to start looking at this. So the question I was asking myself after seeing this, you know, these, these migraineurs that 90% of them were adrenally fatigued. Is, is it the, the entire, when we look at those that have uh, depression and insomnia and digestive issues, could everyone that I am introducing myself to and seeing outside of the migraine world have this stress phenomena, have this low adrenal state? And could this be so prevalent that this is a condition that's so widespread that we're just not really doing the studies we need to do to prove it. Mm -hmm. And the more individuals I've seen, and now that I've opened up kind of my, my practice to, to non-migraine, I am actually just floored <laughs> with how many patients, if I do mm -hmm. the testing, I'm finding that they're in adrenal mm -hmm. fatigue. Wow. So now that we know this, now the question mm -hmm. is asked, that what do we do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the beautiful thing was I started studying Ayurveda during that time. I was doing these studies in my clinic. I was presenting this paper and I was seeing all of this come back. And at the same time, I myself was studying the beautiful science of Ayurveda. And during that time of studying, I started to really realize what all of my very wise, wise instructors were telling me is that it's all about connection. And it's all about understanding authentically who you are. And when you start to understand this, this who are you concept, what are you really made up of? What is your authentic state? Then you start to figure out how to not only manage your stress, how to actually establish a rhythm within your system that stays perfectly in alignment with your own nature and how you can yourself create that cortisol rhythm that gives you energy, that gets rid of pain, that helps your moods, that helps you sleep. It's all based on this connection. It's all it based sounds so beautiful, the way you say it, like the rhythm of this connection, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. the body is so beautiful and to, for you to be able to, you know, connect that is, is, uh, is really, it's, it, that's what Ayurveda is, right? Absolutely. That's exactly what it is, and it's, you know, and it's amazing how we live lives that are so external and so disconnected mm -hmm. that when we start to settle in and we start to realize that Ayurveda's entire premise is based on this connection, we yes. start to now, right, understand that that's why it, it seems so simple, but it's so profound at the same time. Yes. How we can really get ourselves back into balance using these principles that are, that are there for us, right? And I love this quote, and this quote, um, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Oh, and wow. there's so many of us, we live a life that's external. We're living a life for maybe our boss. We're living a life for our parents. We're living a life for others around us, our friends. And when we start to live the life for ourselves and let us be who we are, that's what the beauty of Ayurveda is. It Absolutely. allows you yes. uh -huh. yeah. 
and you start to realize, ah, this is this is who I am, and I'm pretty cool, and I like me, you know. I, I don't need to do this for anybody else because when I'm me and I'm authentically who I am, I am just vibrant and optimal, right? Mm -hmm. So that's this journey. And so in in this model of learning, as I learned about this this high number, 90% of my patients, you know, that had adrenal fatigue. And as wow. I started to see these non-migraineurs, I saw patients with insomnia, patients with problems focusing, problems with depression, you know, other neurological conditions like epilepsy. I started to use the Ayurvedic model with everybody. And the Ayurvedic model, as you've all, you know, you've discussed here in the previous webinars, is an ancient healing system that, you know, many believe was the first system of healing that was, you know, kind of developed five, six thousand years ago. And I love the idea that Arya, you know, means life and Veda's wisdom. It's that wisdom of healing. The wisdom just being and, and the knowledge, the knowledge that's in our Vedic knowledge to, to, to get to that place of healing. And it does require, you know, active participation. It does require, <laughs> you know, um, getting involved and making some changes. Uh, but the outcomes are so incredibly profound. And I'm mm -hmm. one that's prescribed. Remember what I said earlier? I prescribed narcotics and I prescribed heavy duty medications and did very strong injectables for patients to get them out of pain. And here I am 15 years later saying, Ayurveda has completely transformed my practice. I can tell you, I hardly prescribe narcotics at all. That's I great. honestly great. run uh, and it's still mainly migraine. I do a lot of non-migraine also, but mainly the because that's what I'm known for is my work with migraine. Uh, but I, I'm telling you, these migraineurs, with using this model, I'm able to get them off their medications and get them to a place of balance. Amazing. So it's amazing. It's amazing. It really and, is. And, and that's why I feel powerful. In your book, right? Book, right? Mm -hmm. So sorry? In your book, you touch upon a lot of this. Uh, you know, I remember reading some of this. And it was it's profound how you know coming from your western western trained background you're able to say i hardly prescribe narcotics in my you know nor, you know yeah. practice here so Absolutely, Pooja. And you know, that's you know, I write that in the Mysterious Mind book that I wrote is that I because I wanted to share this journey, you know, just like you want to share this message, I want to share it with everybody. And I speak to physicians, I'm flying all over the country speaking to um, very high level physicians that treat a lot of patients with pain. And quite honestly, uh, they're asking me, what, what can we do? Because we cannot keep prescribing, we cannot keep doing what we're doing. I think everyone's realizing that we're in crisis and everyone's looking for solutions. And mm -hmm. I that's really, why now more than ever we need like a healing revolution. We really do. We, we absolutely do, and we are. We're going to share it with everyone, right? We're going to share it. Yes. Exactly. So, you know the concept of these elements to me. When I first heard them, I thought, okay, so we're made up of these five elements: air, space, fire, earth, and water. What What does that really mean? And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't really get it. But a little bit of education actually allows your mind to just just becoming aware of it a little bit allows you to like understand things on such a different level and feel it and, and actually feel and it. understand like yeah. okay like i get that i get why that works yes. it makes sense that why that would make you know and right. uh it's just amazing that that we're all on this like really cool journey of, of spreading this this amazing wisdom yes and and you know so so that's why you know i feel like when you when you understand these elements and you start to realize that you, you like you said, Pooja, you feel them, right? I mean, you feel this the sense of the when the fire is picking up, when your when your body's getting excitable, when mm -hmm. you're starting to get a little confogenic and earthy, you physically feel it. And so now when I see a new patient, I actually have them do a dosha quiz and I say, Okay, let's discuss. Are you in this moment in time? feeling a lot more of that vata, excitable, air and space element, energy, you know? Do you feel like you're always moving and going and doing. Are you always cold and dry? Uh, are you finding yourself, you know, variable in terms of your appetite? Sometimes hungry, sometimes not. Are you losing weight? You know, in terms of pain, we'll go through, you know, a slide a little later about where pain presents based on your dosha. Uh, or are you feeling, you know, real fiery? You know, really heated and hot and irritable and feeling your sensation of reflux and you know this this sense of intensity to your day and to your life and you know perfectionism can we discuss perfectionism for a moment I, you know 
uh, how many of my pain patients I see that have chronic pain beat themselves up every day with this critical perfectionistic nature. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she said this earlier, it's kind of that stress that we create in our minds, right? And yeah. how we look at, <laughs> you brought up in-laws. I love my in-laws. They're, they're amazing. I just said that. I have nothing against <laughs> the in-laws. <laughs> nothing against your lovely in-laws. But you know, it's, it's, it's that perception of, of individuals in our lives and looking at them and we can get ourselves heated and irritable and maybe get critical with them and critical with ourselves. And then it, it's really interesting that that's our state that is manifesting and creating mm -hmm. that feeling, right? Absolutely. And uh, so it's it's so fascinating to, lo to know about the Vata, Pizza, Kapha type and where you are. And then to ask yourself, am I at this moment in time feeling more Vata? You know, am I feeling like my system is moving and going, I'm feeling cold and dry, maybe I'm getting constipated, gas and bloaty, maybe my mind is anxious, um, I could be having problems falling asleep, that's all part of that vata energy, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm feeling pitta, fiery, irritable, reflux, uh, short fused, am I critiquing everybody and everything? And am I getting, you know, migraine is a classic pitta imbalance, you know, a lot of inflammation is linked to that pitta dosha getting out of balance. You know, or am I feeling confogenic? Am I kind of in that real low anhedonic, low energy state, sluggish and fatigued and congested, you know? Or am I feeling all three? <laughs> what is it, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the beauty with Ayurveda is it allows you to go in and connect and get a flavor of where you are. And then with that, we can then address how to get rid of stress. Because only when, when you understand what your authentic state should be and how kind of imbalanced and off you are from that baseline state, can you truly understand how to bring yourself into a normal rhythm and mm -hmm. decrease your stress level of your mind and your body? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, with pain, I thought this was fascinating. I presented this with my um, kind of my headache community. and. You know, I, we have a lot of patients that come in that say, I don't, I don't understand why my headaches or my neck pain or my foot pain is always on the right side of my body, you mm -hmm. know, or, or why am I always getting light sensitivity with my migraines and the person, my, my girlfriend doesn't get that. Or mm -hmm. how come I always have neck pain and um, I always mm -hmm. get the neck pain before my headache, my migraine headache. And... Uh, what, what's that all about? Ayurveda explains it. And in Ayurveda, that wind excitable energy, you know, first builds in the digestive tract. And if it cannot be kind of cleared from the body, it moves up to the neck. So when the Vata system gets out of balance, you start to get neck discomfort. And then when that wind, kind of that energy blows on the fire, it increases the pitta dosha, you start to get pain behind your eyes and you start to get light sensitivity. And right-sided pain is linked to the pitta dosha and left-sided pain is linked to the vata dosha. And if someone comes in and says, you know, why am I feeling so congested all of a sudden? Uh, and I'm feeling depressed and my head pain sounds like maybe I should see my ENT doctor because I think it's a sinus headache. You know, I just say to them, you're getting a little kapha. Let's cut out the dairy and let's start moving a little bit because you probably need to get, get on that treadmill and start moving, right? Because that energy is really heavy in your body. You can actually start recommending lifestyle principles, supplements, um, diet, foods, just simply based on where the energy is kind of imbalanced. And it's, it makes this practice so much more interesting for the patient and for myself and for the doctors that I speak with, because they, they love this, you know, they really enjoy that, that there's, there's understanding behind these complaints. And the patient does have a rationale behind asking the question, and we can give them an intelligent response, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. with all of this, yeah, I've put all this in this book, The Mysterious Mind, and what I'm trying to do is get everyone to, number one, connect with their stress, connect with their dosha, understand where they are now, and understand where they need to go. And to me, that will really help the stress epidemic. That will bring our stress as a nation down. And our healthcare mm -hmm. costs will come down. And we'll all be happier and healthier in the end. And just by simple things, you know, that I, I know that you're gonna cover some like herbs and some other simple things that you can actually use to just incorporate in your daily life that just that just 
naturally help without you thinking about it. There's yeah. a, you know, and just starting somewhere with like even just organic foods like we were talking about, yeah. just something so simple that can radically just shift the way everything works in your body, basically. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. All the sugary drinks that are out there, you know, like loaded with like pounds of sugar and it's like, oh, it's, it's normal. It's just like people just two, two Pepsis, three Pepsis, uh, four Pepsis yeah. a day and it's like completely normal. And giving them to their kids. I remember um, in, you know, my dental practice, there was a parent who came in and said, I, you know, I, I was like, does the child drink soda? We go through a nutritional analysis and, and they said, no, no soda um, because only clear sodas. And I realized the education is so lacking. I mean, he he was giving his child Sprite, thinking it's not soda. Oh and, my. Um, and this <laughs> child is getting, you know, and clearly was obese, clearly had caries, clearly had, you know, acne. It was just uh, full of sugar, <laughs> you know, of this horrible, not even sugar, it's fake, right? It's so, corn yeah. syrup, it's actually, corn, yes. which is even <laughs> yeah. worse. It's like. It's not even raw sugar. You know, so. And you look right. at the nation, isn't I mean, we're just addicted to sugar. It's far more of an addiction than any other, you know, medication, right? It's unbelievable. And yeah. we link that though to the adrenal situation. I actually, to be honest with you, I had this really interesting conversation conversation with a patient today. This patient of mine who who admits to being addicted to M and M's, you know, and she said, I wow. have, I have to have 10 to 15 M&Ms every day. And she's cut herself down from a bag, huge bag of M&Ms down to 10 to 15. Oh my God. What an addiction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, so we're weaning slowly, but the truth is, if you connect it to her low adrenal output, she's not making cortisol. She is, because her body has been in stress mode for so long, she's not making cortisol. So she's yeah. using the M&Ms to bring up her cortisol. Remember, oh the brain has disengaged from her adrenals, so that sugar is coming, the cortisol is coming from her M&M. &M. And so until we can re-engage those pathways, getting her in a good kind of eating pattern, getting her to get to bed by 10 p.m., to do some yoga, to work on her mind, uh, the M&Ms are her crutch because the adrenals are just not kicking in. And so so, it becomes physical. Yeah, absolutely. It becomes physical. Right, right. And I know you discussed the gut brain kind of in the last module, but just to touch on some things that I thought were fascinating, you know, because as a neurologist, when we trained in neurology, we weren't supposed to talk about the gut. You know, that wasn't <laughs> something you talk about, right? As a neurologist, you talk about the yeah, brain. Like, what, what do you mean? You're, you're, you're a brain doctor. You're not <laughs> a gut doctor. You don't ask me about constipation, right? Where am I? Yeah. And, and so what's so funny is the more you learn about it, you know, the more you realize that the gut, the digestive tract is the second brain. And... The gut and the brain are linked together by this nerve called the vagus nerve. You know, it links the central nervous system with the enteric plexus, which is that beautiful kind of nervous system in the digestive tract. And the gut and brain are truly connected. And we all know this. You know, when you're getting nervous to give a speech or to give a lecture and you have that butterflies in your stomach, you know, the first area that our nervous system responds is, is our digestive system. And I learned, and this is through my integrative training, that 95% of the serotonin is made in your gut. So if your digestive system is not in harmony because we're eating a lot of sugar and eating all these bad foods and not eating organic, you know, and eating things that actually are not in alignment with our nature. So a Vata mm -hmm. individual, you know, should not be eating a lot of cold, raw foods. So when I have a Vata dosha imbalanced individual that is on a raw diet, that mm -hmm. will create a lot of disturbance in their gut. Mm -hmm. Right, and yeah. so we can truly help individuals not only by taking away the sugars and the bad foods, but being very prescriptive with their diet based on their dosha to help their microbiome, help serotonin production, and help support their brains. And that's pretty cool, you know? That is, awesome. that is very yeah. cool, yeah. That's pretty cool. And so our fire, our agni, you know, everyone's agni is a little different. Some have, you know, kind of a little bit of a weaker manga agni. Some have that variable vishama agni. Some are really sharp and tichna. This fire, this agni, you know, its peak is at noon, between 10 and 2 during the day. And how many of my patients skip lunch and don't respect lunch? So I mean, she's saying principle, simple principle, have lunch every day, my friends, right? Everyone mm -hmm. yeah. sit down and have lunch. <laughs> yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 
I mean, I remember one guy that came in, a really great guy, and thank God he, he doesn't need to see me anymore because he's doing great. But he was a you know pretty high level at his company, and uh, he would always, as you know, many Americans do, schedule his business meetings you know during lunchtime, right? And he would have his business meetings during lunch. There were always these intense meetings about situations in the firm that things weren't going well and what they needed to change and how they need to modify this and adjust that. And he said it was always stressful. And about three o'clock in the afternoon, he'd get a severe migraine. Well, you know, no surprise if you understand Ayurveda because you're supposed to have lunch at noon. You're supposed to kind of rest during that time, replenish your digestive tract because the agni is the strongest and wanting to be fed. So the brain and the body want to be fed at that time. And if you don't feed the brain and the gut at that time, the fire just increases and that heat rises to the head and creates a migraine, you know? and a simple thing I told him was just, my friend, just start having lunch. And those business meetings, let's move them to maybe 2, 3 in the afternoon, right? And so he shifted and he moved the meetings and he started having lunch every day. And I did add some magnesium, which I know helps a little bit too. It was amazing. Within a month, his migraines had been three to four times a week. They had gone wow. down one time per week. And then a month later, he stopped having them all together. Amazing. Awesome. I mean, isn't that cool, you know? And it was because of this knowledge of the fire and that pitta dosha and supporting the Ayurvedic principles. And, you know, a lot of doctors just say, oh, there's no data. Where's the support on this? This is five, 6,000 years old, this, this information. And it's surviving awesome. right that long. Yeah, because this wasn't oh, just like, oh, my God, I invented this and now everyone has to use it. It's like <laughs> it's been tested. It's proven. It's been yeah. tested with millions if not billions of people and refined over time and made amazing. Like that's really, yeah. it's, it, that's, that's how awesome it is. Like why, re, why reinvent the wheel, you know? That's exactly right. And so when I remember this patient said to me, but isn't breakfast the most important meal? My trainer told me it was breakfast, right? And I said, you know what? I'm not gonna fight ancient medicine. Lunch is your meal that you need to have. Make it your biggest meal and just start yeah. doing that. Cause that's what ancient medicine tells us. And they also say the sun is at the highest point during the day also, which helps your digestive power just process more rather than just it's kind of sitting around if you eat a heavy meal at lunch or dinner, let's just say kind of yeah. there's not as much power, processing power. Absolutely. We, we want to work in it's a very, lot with mother nature. Based on nature. It's I very, mean, that's, yes. it's nature, right? It's, it's the extrinsic and the intrinsic. I think sometimes we forget that we are also made up of nature. Sometimes it's like we separate ourselves. Like, Oh well, we're just we're we're kind of this separate entity, but we are made up of nature. Yeah. It's the it's a part yeah. of life. That's a great point. I mean, we we are what's we're made up of those elements ourselves, and we're surrounded by those elements. And so when the elements shift around us, we shift equally internally. Yep. Right? So as I'm in Chicago here and as it gets colder, you know, we've had a really cold week and a lot of my patients are feeling more neck discomfort. They're feeling more anxious. They're having problems falling asleep. It's because those are the vata elements. And when your, your physical body holds a lot of that vata energy and then the external environment starts to have more vata element within the environment, like you said, Amish, we're connected with that. So we feel it pick up within us. And once you just let that sit with you and you get that, it's then just so many things make sense, you know? Yeah. And it, it, life makes so much more sense and we, we can be much more intuitive with how we should live and be, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, so uh, we're, we're hopefully, are we going to be giving everyone a cookbook, that cookbook? I'd love yes. to- Yes, so we are gonna be giving everyone a cookbook that contributes to a particular level of the campaign. We're gonna go over that in just a second. And we're going to check out the, the campaign page and we're going to see Trupti's cookbook there. And that's really one of the most simplest things to do is to incorporate in your daily life is have a cook these certain meals. I mean, you're already going to eat. So why not eat something that's going to help you detox you and rejuvenate you at the same time? And imagine just putting these very simple spices yeah. into your food that can radically, you know. And have the instruction to do it. And sometimes. have the instruction. I mm -hmm. think it's a little intimidating for people. Well, how am I going to make an Ayurvedic meal, you know? But it's not. A, but it's it's not, about blending exactly. the food that we eat here with these kind of like Eastern spices, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and say. they're delicious. Trust me. Yeah, it's great. So. Yeah, and then you can extend that concept because I think a lot of, 
Um, a lot of my patients, thankfully, and my friends and family, we, we love Indian food, right? But Ayurvedic doesn't mean it has to be Indian food. No. Right? Yes. Um, we incorporate yeah, those yeah. tastes in every single meal we have, right? And uh, this idea of, of then using food to heal, to me, is fascinating. My mom was a home economics teacher. She's a fantastic cook. And I grew up, I was blessed with amazing food. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how medicinal the food was that I was mm -hmm. eating. I didn't know, you know, this is medicine. And only when I started eating more of a Western diet and started getting some symptoms, and I found out I had dairy intolerances and egg intolerances and mm -hmm. started having problems sleeping. And I thought, wait a second, you know, Ayurvedic food and this way that my mom was cooking using spices was actually helping my agni, helping my digestive fire and balancing my physical being, you know, as mm -hmm. I was eating this delicious food. And so if someone has a vata imbalance, you know, and they're gassing, kind of having gas and bloating and all that, adding more cooked foods. If someone's pizza fiery, adding cooling, you know, spices, adding, you know, you know cumin or coriander. And if someone's really kapha, and um, this is what fascinates me, is you add more spice and you kind of, versus the pizza, you reduce the heating spices, the kaffas, you increase the heating spices. So it does sound complicated, but with some simple recipes, and hopefully in that cookbook, you know, there's some simple recipes and then people can expand upon that, uh, you can start to really become intuitive with how to eat based on yeah. what you're feeling, right? Absolutely. And Dr. Gokhani also has some e-courses as well, which we're gonna include in some of these packages as well. So be on the lookout for that. I actually went through some of the modules myself and I was like, this is great because I think sometimes when people look at Ayurveda, they're like, well, vata, pitta, kapha, mm -hmm. elements, I, you right. know, how do I incorporate this into my life? And so um, right. Dr. Gokhani, I started to put together a way to relate it to our everyday life, to relate it to something that we can actually use and, and we can like, make it applicable. You know, I think that's, that's the big piece is education is one thing, but making it applicable is like a whole nother, um, level. another level. Yeah. yeah that, so, yeah, no, thank you for that. And actually, you know, I mean, she came out of a place of, I, I had to do it <laughs> because I was going and speaking to physicians and speaking to patients. And, you know, um, as I've mentioned to you, you know, my clinic visits, you know, they're not much more than 20, 30 minutes and I'm, I'm booked out for three months and I'm busy and I'm trying to get the message out there. And I realized, I've got to make this information more succinct and more tangible and more practical, yeah. right? And then yeah. once you get your kind of get your feet wet and start doing it and start using these principles, then you can become much more, you know, kind of uh, expansive with your your interest in Ayurveda. But start with the basics: Are you earth, wind, or fire? Which one are you, and where are you imbalanced? And make it really simple and practical, right? Yeah. And let's reduce stress. You know, let's reduce that stress that everyone's feeling. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, what do you? I, I mean, we, we like to ask this question: Is like, what do you think of the initiative that we're doing with the Ancient Healthcare Project and the platform we're trying to build? And what does it mean to you? And um, what do you? What do you recommend from it that what that people can start reducing their stress level immediately? You know, I, I am so in favor of every aspect of what you're doing and it's so comprehensive and so beautifully thought out you are addressing uh what we are experiencing is this crisis this incredible crisis of of healthcare where so many people are feeling lost and you're providing information and with the platform with uh the knowledge the educational modules the providers that are going to help teach and educate the supplements that are very high quality coming from excellent sources you know uh, you're really opening up your your mission is you're opening up this area where many others that have maybe wanted to enter haven't been able to because they've been intimidated and i think by presenting it in an organized clear way with so many of us who are kind of in this with you i think there's no question um it's something that I'm so passionate about because I've, I've seen this being needed for so long. I'm only one provider. I can only do so much. And we have so many more people to reach. So I'm thrilled. I'm excited and thrilled for all of your doing and, and just to be a part of it because I know, I know it's going to help so many people. I think we just have to uh, make sure that we stay focused and we stay passionate because the reality is that 
a lot of people that are suffering may feel that this is something that they can't themselves do. And if we can educate in a way that's strategic and hits them and, and gives them what they need, I, I, in no way I think can we um, potentially do this um, without creating a momentum, a shift, a paradigm shift. I Absolutely. know it's going to happen. Absolutely. And if you've been following our campaign, you've seen some of the videos that we've been releasing and it's literally about a healing revolution needs to take place. Yeah. And just bringing back some of this ancient wisdom is the key to unlocking a big chunk of all the rising costs, deaths, disease, all the food problems that we're facing. I mean, it's, it's so simple. It's been there for thousands of years yet we're not adopting it into our lives and why not and i think you know again the big piece is education and uh helping us you know get this information out to 20 million people by the end of this year you know i appreciate everything that you're also doing on the ground locally going to all these events and you know telling everyone about this and you know it's funny it's like going to the pharma companies and presenting to them about this ancient <laughs> science like it's, it's like so powerful. I mean, it's like mind blowing that you're doing this kind of stuff. So, yeah, thank, thank you for your work. Well, for me. Well, thank you, thank you both for letting me be a part of your mission. And what's so great is to actually see the shift happening, to see how Western medicine is embracing this, and mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. We have traveled twenty thousand miles. We've interviewed twenty four doctors. We've, you know. Uh, accumulated probably around 40 hours of footage, of footage. Um, and you know 12 different farms and laboratories I mean it's been an amazing mission for the last two years I mean we've she's kind of both we've been both kind of like just doing it together yeah. and sometimes I go off on my own and go film wow like it's just exciting to bring this to the world honestly um, and again we really really love everyone's support here um anyone that's you know interested in this information even if it's just five dollars you know it's uh that's a great donation or just sharing it on your facebook wall and telling others that may be interested in something like this every little bit helps us get the word out there yeah absolutely absolutely because we, we really the more we can share and the more we can help first and foremost ourselves understand our nature and what we can do to be as optimal and then share that with everyone we know our friends our family our children I've used this model on my children and I have yes. to say I feel so blessed incredibly blessed that I know Ayurveda because mm -hmm. whenever they have any symptoms of any sort I immediately turn to the toolbox I have which is that Ayurvedic toolbox and I grab some of those tools and quite honestly it's powerful this knowledge is powerful and I really want everyone yeah. to we're, we're doing the same yeah Yes, are you doing the same? It's amazing. Oh, we, we oh. put little things just like turmeric in this our morning, daughter's food. Yeah, and, this and, morning, we just did it. Yeah. She, she yeah. kind of had a little, you know, cough and, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, she may be coming down with something. And she right. calls it golden milk. That's what she calls it. That's the it. name for it. Yeah, it's like gold can I have golden milk. She <laughs> knows now. So she intrinsically is knowing what she needs. What to heals do. her. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is quite beautiful to see as, as it unfolds. And, you know, and working with children myself, this is. Uh, this is a mission that we must must get to our children. It's not a, it's not something we can just sit on the sidelines and say, uh, you know, let's let this keep happening as you said. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. right. And it's yeah. funny you say that because my son was feeling congested the other day, and he said, "Mom, can I have my kapha tea?" He calls it kapha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Can I have my kapha tea?" And That's I, awesome. And I love how the word cough comes from kapha. You know, You're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that, huh? So, I mean, all this Western stuff when we call someone airheaded or hot-headed, oh. I mean, that's vata dosha, pitta dosha. You know, yeah. we just need to change the lingo so everyone understands we're saying the same thing. <laughs> well, we pitta -headed. Add, yeah, pitta -headed. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. So, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting to be in this time because everyone is starting to demand it more and more, and. Um, mm. Yeah, we'll see a shift happening, and it's happening already. Very cool. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the maybe the, the brain-gut connection Absolutely. and how Trifola can help that? Um, so maybe just understanding, we know we covered the brain-gut a little bit, but it's yeah. always good to hear a different perspective, and it's always good to understand how maybe an herb or two can help fix that connection. Yeah, you know, uh, it's I know personally for me, 
I, I take Trifla every day because it just helps me. And it's just, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing yeah. thing. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you're, you're speaking to my heart because Trifla is the mainstay of our family. Everyone's taking Trifla, you know, and I try to give Trifla to anyone I can, you know. It's just, um, <laughs> you know, it's so cool. Three fruits, right? Three fruits, the Amalaki, Harataki, Bibitaki, and these three fruits have this incredible effect of pacifying all three doshas. And what's so nice about it is it's this 5,000, 6,000 year old remedy that truly allows us to keep our system in this state of of harmony so for example if we happen to be a little you know kind of fiery and excitable and eat a spicy meal and get a little inflammatory in our gut the trifla will clear that out through the liver and if we start to get a little um maybe vata you know a little bloated maybe after eating some raw foods the trifla will actually clear that energy out from the colon. And so it's working to constantly kind of reset and repair. And I look at it like your safety net, you know, for your digestive tract, because it's always there to help your system get back into a balanced state. And of all the formulas, I have to say it's one of my favorites. And there's no question that if we work on that gut, because the more we're learning about the microbiome, the more we're learning about that gut integrity and it's linked to brain health, the more we realize that if we don't do everything in our power to eat the right way and to honor the natural digestive capacity we have and to keep our microbiome as healthy as we can, we will honestly be a setup for chronic disease. I mean, mm -hmm. Hippocrates said this, all disease begins in the digestive tract, in the gut, you know? And so we know this. We know that the, the gut is linked to the rest of the body. And specifically being a neurologist, I'm always telling my patients it's linked directly to your brain. And so trifla is an incredible tool. Drinking some cumin coriander fennel tea is amazing. Adding the spices and the foods we talked about is amazing. And the more we realize that we can actually create a microbiome by using Ayurvedic herbals, as opposed to kind of replenishing the lining. And I'm a believer of probiotics, and I think they're beautiful to take. But we have to keep in mind that's replenishing the lining with a certain strain, a certain amount of probiotic. That's a very specific count based on the type you're taking. The mm -hmm. trip allows our own digestive system to decide how much of the different bacteria, depending on the strain that's best for us, to produce and to have mm -hmm. in harmony. Mm -hmm. So the trifla allows you to create your own lining. It allows you to honor your natural system, but it doesn't mm -hmm. give you the bugs as a probiotic does. So I believe in probiotics. I believe in drinking kefir and working on you know, fermented foods for some to help re replenish the lining. But we also want to let ourselves create the right lining by giving us something like trifla. It's a yeah. very useful way of approaching it, right? It's very important, and uh, it was really interesting to learn about trifla too, and how um, just tasting trifla, like putting it on your tongue, actually starts excreting enzymes in your digestive tract and your pancreas and all these different organs. And I'm like, that right. is like amazing. That it just just here. it all starts from just the tongue, and then it, it you know it's it's wild. It's it's amazing. Yeah, enzymes in your salivary glands, and then that's how digestion starts. Yep. That's very, very cool. Right. So, yeah, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to take a little short break here, check out the perk video, and uh, we'll be right back. Hi, Amish Shah here from Ancient Healthcare. I first got the idea for the Ancient Healthcare project after my doctor gave me the bad news. You see, back in my 20s, I was this hotshot online entrepreneur. I partied hard, I drank hard, I stayed up all night, I ate unhealthy food, and for a while, I felt invincible. Everything came crashing down on me when I found out I had a fatty liver, sky-high cholesterol, and a broken digestive system. In fact, my doctor told me I'd be lucky to make it past 35. And so here I am. 36 years old, and luckily, because of an ancient healthcare system, I am completely healed. We'll get to what the system is in just a second. You see, I was just one small part of a far bigger problem. Because when you look at the statistics, we live in hazardous times. 
In fact, it's safe to say that with each generation, we're moving further and further away from our natural state of well-being. And these problems are coming at us from so many angles. Obesity rates are going up. Chronic illness rates are going up. Stress levels are through the roof. Tens of thousands of types of artificial chemicals are being pumped into our foods. Over 80% of the food available in the United States is genetically modified. And even our own medical system is broken. I mean, did you know that over 400,000 Americans die every year from preventable medical errors? Now, more than ever, we need a healing revolution. That's why my team and I launched this Ancient Healthcare Project. The Ancient Healthcare Project is a multi-part campaign throughout 2016 that aims to revive the 6,000-year-old healing science known as Ayurveda. Ayurveda is a holistic healthcare system that means life knowledge in Sanskrit, and its main principle is simple. It's about being in harmony with both Mother Nature and your unique body composition. But instead of all the chemicals, the invasive surgeries, and the one-size-fits-all approach you'll find in many aspects of modern medicine, Ayurveda shows you how to eat right. It shows you how to make the right lifestyle choices, how to remove toxins from your body. It also shows you how to enrich your diet with nutrient-dense herbs and supplements, and even how to reconnect with the essence of who you really are, all through a unique approach that honors your personal characteristics. And all of this so you can enjoy greater health, greater energy, and greater freedom in every area of your life. What's even more incredible about Ayurveda is that all of the remedies and techniques have been documented for thousands of years and tested on millions, if not billions of people, and only recently have been recognized and studied by modern science. You see, I use this very system and approach to heal myself. And now it's time to bring it to the world through detoxification protocols, herbal supplements, education, food, and lifestyle changes, I was able to completely cure myself. But there's one problem with Ayurveda. Most people either don't know about it or they find it too complex to learn about. And so through this ancient healthcare project, we aim to spark a healing revolution by spreading Ayurveda awareness and training to at least 20 million people by the end of this year. The Ancient Healthcare Project brings together a number of initiatives throughout 2016 to help us achieve this goal. The first is an educational documentary film we plan to launch in May. My team and I spent two years traveling thousands of miles across the world, tracking down farms, doctors, ashrams, laboratories, manufacturing plants, and Ayurvedic physicians to learn the truth about Ayurveda. And let me just tell you, the more deeper we got into this body of wisdom, the more we realized how much people need it. So we cannot wait to share this documentary with the world in May. We're releasing it online and through a number of premiere events in San Diego, New York, and India. Apart from the film, we're also launching a line of Ayurvedic supplements through what we call a seed to table approach. And what this basically means is that we're in charge of every step of the supply chain for these supplements, from the procurement of the seeds, to the farming, to the harvesting, to the bottling, and to the distribution. Our goal with this seed to table approach is to set a new standard in quality, purity, safety, ethics, and sustainability that no other supplement manufacturer can match. Because we believe this is important to the consumer, People now care more than ever about where their products actually come from. Did you know that Ayurveda cataloged over 9,000 medicinal plants and herbs over 6,000 years ago? Well, one of our biggest goals with this ancient healthcare project is to also create platforms for people to not just practice Ayurveda, but to teach and spread it too. So another thing we're doing is we're setting up a HIPAA compliant telemedicine platform that will link up patients and practitioners. What's great about this is that it's a win-win for everyone. Patients get personalized consultations from the comfort of their own home, and Ayurvedic practitioners get a wider client base to work with. So there you've got it, the film, the supplements, the telemedicine platform, and we've also got a host of other complementary initiatives and products throughout 2016, including e-courses, cookbooks, spice kits, and even an Ayurvedic retreat, which will lead to our very own in-house certification program. And eventually, an Ayurvedic school we plan to open in 2017. 
All of these initiatives come together to create education, awareness, and tools for people to integrate Ayurveda into their modern lives. So it's really a 360 degree holistic and long-term solution that we're aiming for with this ancient healthcare project. Okay, so this is where we need your support. See, up to this point, ancient healthcare has been completely privately funded. From the documentary filming, to the supplement production and R&D, to the upcoming telemedicine and retreat logistics, we've been paying for everything out of our own pockets. What we're looking for now is a financial boost to help us optimize and produce the best possible products we can and get maximum exposure for them. More specifically, we need funds to drive the ancient healthcare core team and expenses so we can continue to, one, complete the post-production on the documentary film, Two, continue building out the supplements, the spices, the learning materials, and the telemedicine platform. And three, we need funds for our promotional and live event costs, which will help us get on the road and spread this message. To show that we are serious about what we are creating, we're also donating 10% of proceeds from this campaign to various charities, which will contribute towards sponsoring clinical trials, building Ayurvedic schools, creating scholarships and grants, and furthering education and Ayurveda infrastructure. The total preliminary sum we're looking at is $150,000. And we've also lined up some exciting stretch goals in the event we hit our initial target. We're also really excited about the perks we've prepared for this campaign because they're not just there to reward our backers, but also to immerse them in the ancient healthcare experience too. We're giving away training materials like cookbooks, mini courses, telemedicine consultations, spots at the upcoming retreats, invites to the premieres, and even certification options, or just lunch with me and the team. The way we see it, the world needs this ancient wisdom now more than ever. So we're calling on the whole community to help us spark a healing revolution across the planet with Ayurveda. Thank you for joining me, and it's great to have you on this adventure. When you support the Ancient Healthcare Project, you get rewarded in a variety of exciting ways. From digital film access, to supplement and spice starter kits, to telemedicine consultations, and even Ayurvedic coaching certifications. You're sure to find a perk that fits your interest and budget. For one dollar, you get to join our movement, and we thank you very much for becoming a part of the Ancient Healthcare Movement. You'll receive behind the scenes news and information about casting decisions and photos from the set. For $10, you get to experience the film online. Enjoy lifetime digital access to the film and a digital copy of the Ancient Healthcare Ayurvedic Cookbook packed with dozens of authentic recipes that will heal, energize, and optimize your mind and body. Plus, get your name featured in our film credits. For $25, you get the Blu-ray DVD Receive a high quality Blu-ray DVD package of the film shipped directly to your door anywhere you are in the world. Plus, you still get digital access and the Ancient Healthcare Ayurveda Cookbook. You'll also get your name featured in our film credit. For $35, you get the Ayurveda Digital Starter Kit. You'll receive our digital starter kit that equips you with the fundamental wisdom, recipes, tools, and techniques for enriching every part of your life with Ayurveda. It contains a collection of Ayurveda guided meditation MP3s, an amazing in-depth Ayurveda 101 e-course, a digital cookbook, and digital film access. And you'll get your name mentored in our film credits. For $100, you'll get the Ayurveda Digital Starter Kit Plus. It's same as the perk before, except you get two more courses. These two courses focus specifically around Ayurveda in women and Ayurveda in children. For $200, and there's a limit of 25 people for this one, is the Ancient Nutrient Starter Kit plus Kalri Chowdhury's book, The Prime. You get to receive our physical starter kit with essential Ayurvedic supplements and spices for daily use. It includes three bottles of Ancient Healthcare seed to table supplements, Trifala, Bacopa, and Turmeric. The Ancient Healthcare Spice Pack, containing six vials of nutrient-dense spices, such as fenugreek, fennel, coriander, 
mustard seeds, cumin, and turmeric, and digital access to the movie. This also contains the training content from the digital starter kit and your name in our film credits. For $300, you'll get the Project Yourself training kit plus add-ons. Receive the Project Yourself digital home training course packed with nine modules of ancient wisdom, including Ayurveda, meditation, visualization, and more. This home training course takes all the ancient wisdom of India, brings it all together, allowing one to transform every area of their life. This also includes the digital access to the movie, the physical ancient nutrient starter kit, the training from the digital starter kit, and your name in the film credits. For $500, you'll get the Ayurvedic telemedicine pack. You receive a 60 minute one-on-one -on -one telemedicine session with the world-renowned Ayurvedic physician. This is a powerful opportunity to experience an Ayurvedic action plan personalized to your needs and condition. Also included is digital access to the movie, the physical ancient nutrient starter kit, the training content from the digital starter kit, and your name in the film credits. For $1,000, this is limited to 10 individuals, you get to be the film premiere guest of honor. Be our guest of honor and connect with other Ayurveda enthusiasts and be the first in the world to watch our film at our premiere this May. Choose between screenings in San Diego, New York, and India. Plus, the physical ancient nutrient starter kit, the training content from the digital starter kit, your name in our film credits, and a lunch date with our founders. For $2,000, this is also limited to 10 individuals, you get the pre-premiere VIP package. You get to join the director and select cast in San Diego for a private film screening before the final cut. Your feedback that day can actually influence the final cut itself. This is followed by a private dinner at the director's home. You also get two VIP tickets to the movie premiere with all the experts from the film. On top of that, your logo, your name, and your website are featured in the premiere brochure and your name in our film credits. Plus, you get access to 10 HD special downloads. For $27.50, and this is limited to five, you get to play an extra role in our film and join us for a lunch. Your face will be seen in the film. You will spend the day on set in San Diego and be placed in a scene as close to the camera as possible and you get to eat lunch with the cast and crew. You also get two cast VIP premiere tickets to join the filmmakers and experts from the film on the day of the premiere in the first couple rows of seats. Your logo, name, and website are featured in the premiere brochure and your name in our film credits. Plus, you get 10 HD special downloads. For $5,000, this is also limited to 10 individuals, you get the Ancient Healthcare Retreat Package. You reserve a spot at one of our upcoming Ancient Healthcare Retreats in April or October. You get to get away and get treated by the world's best Ayurvedic physicians and experts for a week and experience hands-on Ayurvedic detox, cooking, and massage coaching. The accommodations and food will be amazing and will be provided by us. You also get digital access to the movie, your name in our film credits, and a lunch date with the founder. For $6,000, and this is limited to 25 individuals, you get the Ayurveda Coaching Certificate. You get to receive training for our Ancient Healthcare Ayurveda Coaching Certification. This is your launchpad to not only learning Ayurveda for yourself, but for teaching and empowering others, either as a hobby or as a business. You will be trained by the world's best Ayurvedic physicians and experts. You'll also get a digital copy of the movie, a physical ancient nutrient starter kit, the training content from the digital starter kit, your name in our film credits, and a lunch date with our founders. For $10,000, limited to five individuals, you'll get to be a part of the ultimate Ayurveda package. You get everything in the above retreat package, except this one includes two cast VIP premiere tickets to join the filmmakers and experts from the film in the first couple rows of seats. You'll also get the physical ancient nutrient starter kit, the training content from the digital starter kit, your name in our film credits, and a lunch date with our founders. Your logo, name, and website are featured in the premiere brochure and your name in our film credits, plus 10 HD special downloads. For $25,000, this is limited to one lucky individual. You get to become our executive producer. This is the ultimate perk for that one individual who believes in our mission just as much as we do. 
you get to receive an executive producer credit for our upcoming film on IMDb. You also get 10 VIP premiere tickets for your friends and family to join the filmmakers and experts from the film in the first rows of seats. You will also receive an invite to the pre-premiere party. Additionally, you get a chance to come to our retreat and get treated by the world's best Ayurvedic physicians and experts. Thank you so much for supporting our mission and thank you for any perk that you choose. We truly, truly appreciate all of your support. Thank you. All right, we're back. Thank you again for uh, supporting us on this amazing, amazing mission. And uh, just wanted to uh, wrap up by again thanking Dr. Gokhani one more time. Yes. And uh, any last words from Buja if she wants to include some? No, yeah, we're just so thrilled. I mean, I was truly, I mean, blown away with some of the stuff you were saying today, Dr. Gokhani. It's, it's just so amazing to be able to see how everyday life, everyday stress, everyday issues um, don't need to control our lives mm -hmm. if we you know if we're able to give in to the nature or extrinsic and intrinsic nature of Ayurveda um, so thank you for shedding light on that for sure and I hope everyone I'm sure everyone enjoyed that so yeah thank you for being here absolutely and Dr. Gokhani any last words for everybody well thank you both for having me I honestly I love you both you both are amazing and you're doing such incredible work and uh, my last words are just to kind of emphasize this concept that each and every one of us have the ability to learn this model and to learn it in a way that works for our lifestyle and to use the principles, you know, in a way that fit our current way of living. And if you can't do everything, if you can't change your diet, take supplements, start doing yoga and start meditating, just start with changing your diet, you know? Just start with mm -hmm. one principle, one or two ideas, and just start to layer it in. And I promise you, I'm, I've been seeing patients for over a decade now, 15 years, changes will occur that will just amaze you, and you'll feel so much better. And I can't even tell you how you'll want to keep doing more and learning more, and I'm excited to see where this journey takes everyone. So thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to more work with you in the future. Thanks cool. so much. Thank yeah. you. And again, check out the campaign page. You can check out the ancienthealthcareproject.com or you can check out the Indiegogo link that's um, on this page itself. And just share it with friends and family and just this education needs to get out to more people. So really appreciate everyone being on this. See you soon.